Hey, this video is gonna be some quick and easy tips that you can use to start taking better portraits with your phone, or just some tips that you can use to coach your Instagram husband into how to actually take a decent photo of you. So the first tip is phone specific, and that is for the iPhone 10, iPhone 8 Plus, iPhone 7 Plus, or the Google Pixel. And there may be a few other phones that do this as well, I'm not quite sure, but that is using portrait mode. If your phone has portrait mode, I would highly recommend using the portrait mode feature because it blurs out the background, it immediately steps up the look of the photo. It makes the photo look like it came from a professional camera and not from a phone. So if you have that mode, I would at least take some of your photos with portrait mode. So the next tip I think is one of the most important in increasing the quality of your image, and that is bringing down the exposure. I'm gonna show you how to specifically do it on the iPhone, but I'm sure other Android phones can do this as well. I just don't own any to be able to show you. Whenever you use your phone's camera, it automatically looks at the scene and it decides how bright the image should be, and typically, it chooses to make it too bright. And so you can actually bring down the exposure by tapping on the screen. And I typically, whenever I'm taking photos of people, I will tap and hold on their face. And so this locks the focus on their face. And then there's a line to the right of that box and you can drag your finger down and it brings down the exposure. I would say with almost every single photo I take on my phone, I bring down the exposure at least a little bit because if you edit the photo afterwards, you can always make it brighter, but it's much harder to make it darker. So we're bringing down the exposure, which photographers would call exposing for the highlights. But the next tip is stepping away from the wall. Create some distance or some depth between the person and the background. This creates a much more dynamic image and it just creates a little more focus on the person than the background. Typically whenever you're taking a photo of somebody up against the wall they put their back almost touching the wall and not that this can't be a good image but I would at least try having them step forward three or four feet. This gives the image a little more depth and a little more interest on the person and can create a little more dynamic image. So in this photo I had my wife Sarah stay and right up against the wall. And in this photo, I had her step away about three or four feet. So the next two tips are about taking more than one photo. Instead of just having the person stand there and get trying to get it perfect and then taking the photo and having them look at it or whatever, take more photos. So the first part of this, I would say, keep taking photos even whenever you're talking to the person or they're talking to you. Make them laugh, make them smile. If they look over to a friend and they're asking what they should do, keep shooting even that. A lot of times whenever the person, you know, ask a question or something, we'll drop the camera or drop, drop the phone down and, and listen to them. Instead, keep taking photos of them because capturing that real smile or that real laugh, capturing their body language when they're not thinking about their body language is gonna be much more natural. So whenever I'm taking photos of Sarah, let's say on my phone, I typically take like 10 to 15 photos of her in the same spot just as she is moving around just to get different facial expressions and different uh, body movements. So going along with shooting more is shoot more angles. So instead of just getting the shot of the flat wall with the person standing in front of it, after you take a few of those, just take like two or three steps to the right and take, take some more. Hold the phone over your head and take one. Crouch down and take one. Get close to the person or step even further away from the person. You can get a lot of different shots in a very short amount of time. Some of those are probably gonna be terrible, but some of those may be good, and it just allows you to be a little more creative, just have fun with it, there's no right or wrong way. If you take a bad photo, it's not like anybody has to see it. Just, you might find that winning image by just moving around and shooting more. So another iPhone specific thing that I would recommend using is live photos. And you can't use portrait mode and live photos at the same time, but if you're not doing portrait mode, I'd recommend having live photos on because live photos capture basically like a three second moment. So if you took the photo just like a second after a really great hair blow or a really genuine smile, but in live photos, you can actually edit it and go back in time and choose that perfect moment to actually make the photo. So again, this goes along with the shoot more. So if you're using live photos, you're actually automatically shooting more. And you can go back anytime and choose the frame that you wanna use for the photo. Okay, so those are some tips that you can start using right now to start taking better portraits with your phone. Bring down the exposure, step away from the wall, and shoot more. But another thing you can do to increase your phone photography game is to use some additional lenses. I recently just got these lenses from Moment, and what these allow you to do is get a more variety of images and also get a better quality images than just the stock lens on the phone. And so here are some different looks that you can get with these lenses. This photo is with the stock phone lens. This photo is with the 60 millimeter telephoto lens. This one is with the 18 millimeter wide angle lens. 
And just for fun, this is a picture with the 170 degree fisheye lens. Now these lenses are expensive. They're like $100 a piece. So if you're looking at just getting one, I would personally recommend the telephoto lens because I personally like the look of a long lens whenever it comes to taking photos of people. But the 18 millimeter wide angle lens can get some really interesting portraits as well. And it's great for architecture and street photography, things like that. Okay, that's it. Hopefully you can use those tips and go out and up your Instagram game. If that was helpful, hit the like button, subscribe. If you're not, I make videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on this channel my wife Sarah who you saw in all the photos she is into books and makes videos about books every Tuesday and Thursday on her channel thank you guys for watching and we'll see you on Instagram